instruments or research instruments. Click yeah. on that, and you'll see a picture of this microscope. I believe if you scroll to the bottom of that article. I, anyway, this microscope was in pieces. Yeah. Wife made every single piece himself. Yeah, every everything. Piece. He was a master machinist. He was incredible. All right, back in a minute with scientist John Bedini. Okay, back with John Bedini. Just uh, incredible to go down to John Crane's house, walk in there, and literally not have any place to sit down. The pl- in other words, the place was full of Dr. Reif's genius. Yes, his inventions, his machines, his, mind, his, his prize of all prizes, his Reif Universal Microscope Number 3 in pieces. Yep. I remember standing there, Jeff. And my main reason basically for getting into this 22 years ago was I had an aunt that was dying of breast cancer. And so I was really, I was really interested and John Crane claimed that he had the cure, which was this little, you know, $500 box, which he he took $500 from the 12 of us, of which at that time he didn't have the generators that he promised. And so we drove out there. But we we not only drove out there because of that, we drove out there because of the interest. Sure. You know, and... He, and, he was and, selling that little off-the-shelf, off basically off-the-shelf uh, frequency generator, Yeah, wasn't there's it? a picture of it on my page. Yeah. But the point was I got down to this basement, and I stood there, and I was just... I was going, my God, you know, something that that's this miraculous. Why is it all taken apart? Why is it in the dirt? You know, why is there cobwebs everywhere? You know, what is all this stuff? You know, there were gas tubes up on some racks up there that were huge in size. I mean, probably things that people have not seen. Um, I might point out right at this time that if you want a good look, at the research letters, the microscopes, and everything, you just go to www.rife.org. They've got a lot of data. Yes, uh, that's Stan Truman's site, and believe me, Stan is one of the best researchers there is mm-hmm. when it comes to this, along with uh, uh, the man that builds the BCX, along with Jeff Garf, and a few others probably are, are the only ones building a machine is even close to this. Well, thank you for that. The, the BCX, uh, uh, and Roger, we're, Roger, and we're Roger, going to show you. Yeah. We're going to show you mm-hmm. in some of these videos why I do believe that this is possible and that the BCX and, of course, Jeff Garf's machine mm-hmm. and a few others can do this. Right, and if you look in New Earth, you will see the BCX listed up there under Rife Research Institute. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, John. Now, so what I did was I, I asked him very politely because I was kind of mad because I had paid this money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you didn't get it, right? Yeah. So, you know, it, it wasn't there. So I said, uh, why don't you just come and work with us? I just sort of played it that way. And I says, you know, we'll pay you. We don't want you to do this for nothing. Dr. Strecker actually took John Crane in and, and kept him at his apartment in uh, in Eagle Rock. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Dr. Strecker had one hell of a caseload, you know, all day long because he was a good doctor. He was a practicing physician. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so Dre- Strecker actually would take this guy and, and took him under his wing and fed him, I mean, Dr. Strecker used to just like jokingly say to me, I've never seen a guy eat so much in my whole life, you know. And uh, and I'd say, yeah, I know. I said, you take him to lunch, and it's like, you know, you better have 100 bucks in your pocket by the time you get out of there. Well, John Crane at this stage in his life was in his 80s, wasn't he? 
Yeah, 70. Close to it? Yeah, yeah he was up 70, there. Yeah, 75. Living alone down there. Yeah, but he was. It, it, John Crane could come to life. In a matter of seconds. Well, I, you know, I, I didn't spend the time face to face with him, but I did on the telephone uh-huh. discover that very same thing, John. Yeah. He, he came, all of a sudden, he was back there in the lab with Royal Rife. Yeah. Yeah, but we're going to get into that, Jeff. Yeah. And we're going to find out what happened here. Anyway, so we, we, uh, John Crane just showed up with his little lawyer. There was a lawyer involved in this, of course, always. And uh, they, they, the, the, my, the, the virus three microscope was back together mysteriously. I mean, boom, snap, just like that. Over what period of time? Yeah, about a week. So John Crane worked overtime, he must reassembling have. thousands of pieces and putting the thing back together. <laughs> yeah, he must have worked. You're right. He must have worked overtime. Because this thing got delivered to Silmar, California, and it was in the lab up on Sayer Street. And I'd walk around this thing at night, Jeff, and I'd say to myself, my God, look at the workmanship in this thing. I mean, there was not one burr, one thing out of place. Everything was perfectly machined, including the barrels, the lenses. There were boxes of lenses that John Crane had there. I mean, Rife ground his own lenses. Uh, a byproduct of his uh, his brilliant studies yeah. at the Zeiss Optical Institute yeah, but in anybody, Germany. Right, but anybody, Jeff, that could make a set of valves for a V-12 engine in a racing boat like mm-hmm. he did. Mm-hmm. Wow. He had to be one heck of a machinist. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yes, he, he held the record for the fastest speedboat <laughs> on this engine that he built. <laughs> and so that's part of Rife's history, too. Um, he also had, was good friends with Lee DeForest, all right. Pi- pioneer of uh, radio and, and television. Yeah, the, and, and Armstrong, mm-hmm. and probably Gila Packard. Mm-hmm. Now, word, you know, this is all starting to tie in together because you got Lee DeForest, the inventor of it, right? The tube. Mm-hmm. You've got well, Without Lee DeForest, we got no radio, by the way. <laughs> you got you got Armstrong with the super head. Heterdyne, you follow me? Yeah. And you got Hila Packard with the first tube oscillator that was stable. You follow me? Mm-hmm. There's three items here. Mm-hmm. There's the super heterodyne, which is mixing these frequencies. Regenerative feedback, all right, for the oscillator. You've got, you know... DeForest delivering boxes of tubes to Rife. Mm -hmm. Boxes, I mean big crates. And so, so, (laughs) you've got a guy that has to do it all. He has to build the microscope. Right. Are we going to commercial? We will. Let's do that. Come right back and pick it up right here. So, I hope you, you got that. Three monumental components here of what Royal Rife was about to put together. Think of all, at the end of this program, I think you're going to be angry, a lot of you, as well you should be. Maybe it won't even take that long. I know I am every time I think about Rife and what he did and how unnecessary most disease and certainly most cancers are. All the suffering. It's terrible. All right, back in just a minute with John Bedini. 